How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the next episode on how to create PHP. Now in this episode, somebody asked me to show how we could change the URL name inside a website if we have a PHP based website. Now, what I'm talking about is instead of it saying mntouch.net forward slash article dot PHP question mark ID equal to one uh, and name equal to hello world, then we could have something like mntouch.net forward slash article forward slash one forward slash hello world, which is much cleaner to look at, not just from a usability point of view, but also for SEO, because when we want to optimize for search engine, so your website will pop up more often inside a search engine, uh, it is proven that search engines love that your URL looks clean. So instead of having this long messy URL, it's much better to have a clean looking URL. Now I do have a separate episode in my HTML course showing how we can change the, what do you call it, the URL using uh, something called an HD access file. And we're going to do something very similar to that in this episode. So don't worry if you haven't seen that episode, we're going to take everything from scratch um, up till, well, pretty much from start to finish. So, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, first of all, show you that I do have a website ready. Uh, I do have a website called eventuals.net and inside this website, I have a front page and I also have, you know, a style sheet and a couple of pictures and that sort of thing. So what I want to do is I want to create an article page called article.php. Once I visit that article page, I wanted to show certain information on the page depending on what article I want to display. Now, typically using PHP, which you should know by now, uh, if I want to show a specific article inside a website, uh, we will write something like, if we were to copy the URL here, and show it inside here just as an example. If I want to see a specific article inside a website, I would say mtouch.net forward slash article dot php and, and then the ID of the article. So I would say ID equal to, I don't know, 23, which might be the ID for that specific article inside the database. And then the article name equal to hello, world and maybe also a timestamp if you want that so we could also say and time equals to some kind of random number that is equal to the time that the article was uploaded so uh, but you get the idea we have this long complicated URL inside the website and I just want to reduce it down to a much more simple format so what I want to do to start with is I want to go ahead and tell the server that once it loads up this specific page called article.php, it should not show inside the URL article.php. Uh, we need to show something else that's much cleaner. And then it should still go into our server and fetch the specific page that we want to show with this new URL. So the way we do that is using a ht access file. Now an ht access file is a configuration file for your Apache web server that you have on your uh, on the internet. So what it does is that once I load up my website inside my online version of the, the website, um, the server is going to check for this ht access file first and then see if there's any kind of conditions or rewrite rules that it needs to check for before it displays the website inside the browser. So if I told the server that, well, if somebody writes uh, mtouch.net forward slash article, then it should show article.php instead of a page called article, if that makes sense. So that's what we're going to create in this episode. Now, don't worry about the fact that we're going to create a ht access file. It is very easy to do. I'm going to show you how we can do it. So what I want to do is I have a page here called article.php. Inside this page, I told it that if we were to load up a website that has a ID and a name set inside the parameters of the URL, then I want to get those parameters and then show it inside my website. So it says article ID is, and then the get variable from inside the URL. And the same thing with article name is, and then the name variable inside the URL. So that is just basic PHP. You should know how to do this section here by now. So what I want to do is I want to open up a new file and I want to go ahead and save it inside my root folder of my website. I'm going to save it as .htaccess. 
it's very important that you don't put anything in front of the dot. It has to be punctuation ht access because that's the name of the configuration file. In the same way as you don't change index.php into front page.php because then the server gets all confused and doesn't know which page need to load up as the front page, the same thing goes here. So ht access with a punctuation in front of it. I'm going to save it. Now inside of here, there's a couple of things that we can do. Well, there's a lot of things you can do inside an HT access file because like I said, it's a configuration file. Uh, but the one thing we want to do is we want to rewrite the URL uh, inside the website. So if I were to, let's say, go to this server here, or load up this website, I want to turn on something called a rewrite uh, engine, which is something that allows for us to do this rewritten thing inside the URL. So what I need to do is I need to write the first command, which is rewrite, um, uh, rewrite engine, and set it to on. Now, what this does is that it turns on the rewrite engine that allows for us to actually do what we're about to do. So once we've done this, we need to write a couple of rewrite conditions in the same way as we do with PHP. We, we have a couple of conditions first. If the, if the conditions are true, then we want to run a certain piece of code. So this is a way for us to not get errors inside our server when we load up the website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say rewrite cond, which stands for rewrite condition. And then I want to go ahead and say a percentage. Then I want to say curly brackets and then say request underscore file name in capitalized letters. So we want to say request underscore file name. And then afterwards, I want to say what exactly we're trying to request here. Because right now we're saying I want to check the server for a file name or I want to take the file name that we have here inside the URL. And I want to check the server for something specific. So I want to check if we have anything that matches it. And what I'm trying to match is if we have any kind of directories that is equal to uh, the name of whatever we wrote inside the URL. So if I write forward slash article, then I want to check if we have a folder or a directory inside the server called article. And the reason I want to do that is because if I do have a folder called article, then I don't want to load up a page called article because it's going to screw up something inside the website if you have a document and a folder called the same thing. So I want to say we want to check if we do not have a directory by saying dash D that has the same name as the URL. Now, don't get too confused about this. I'm, I'm trying to explain it as well as I can. Uh, the next condition we want to check for, after checking if there is a folder inside the server that has the same name as the URL, is I want to check if we have a certain file uh, with this name inside of it. So I want to check if we have a file called article and then check if it has a certain extension. If the file exists inside the server, it means that we have the file that we want to show when people access just slash article. And if that is true, then we need to continue to uh, the rule that we want to create. So another way of checking if we have the file existing in the server that we want to show, which is important. So again, I'm just going to copy what we have up here, paste it in. I want to request a file name from the URL. And then I want to check not if we have a directory and again, up here, we're checking if we do not have a directory with the exclamation mark. Down here, I want to check if we have the file name, which is with an F, called something specific. So I want to check if we have the file name with a .php extension. So we say backslash .php. If we have this file name, then everything is good so far. And I want to continue and actually do something inside this server here. So if I do actually access mtools.net, forward slash article. Then I want to load up article.php instead. And that's what we're trying to do here. So we're just trying to access a document that wasn't accessed in the URL and show it instead. So after we check for all these different conditions that has to be true, otherwise it's not going to continue. Then we want to create a rewrite rule, which is the thing that actually goes in and fetches the correct file and, showed it as, and shows it inside the browser instead of what we wrote inside the URL. So I'm going to say we have a rewrite rule. 
And inside this rewrite rule, we need to create a couple of different things. First of all, we need to tell it that if you write this specific thing inside the browser, this specific path inside the browser, then I want to load this specific page inside my server. So the way we're going to do that is using something called regular expressions, which we talked about in one of the previous episodes on this course here uh, in my PHP course. So if you're not familiar with regular expressions, I do recommend that you go back and check that out first. You don't have to. You can still do this tutorial completely without it, but it makes it easier to understand if you know what regular expressions is. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say, um, what is it called? I think it's called a carrot the little symbol that goes up, which is this one here, the little arrow, uh, which means that anything before what I'm about to write here. So I want to say the anything before inside the URL and then say article. So if the URL has article inside of it somewhere, then it's just going to just go ahead and ignore everything before that. So if we have article inside the URL, I want to say forward slash some kind of ID because remember I want to get the ID and the name of this specific article and again you can change this in whatever way you want to in my example here I'm getting the ID and the name so if you had a username or a user that logged into a website then you probably have something like a user ID and a username or something so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write a regular expression that is going to allow certain characters to be used uh, between this forward slash and the next forward slash, if that makes sense. So the regular expression is going to say, well, we're going to go ahead and first of all, create an actual regular expression by saying parentheses. And then I want to create the rule for this specific regular expression. So I want to say brackets. And inside the brackets, I'm going to tell it what I want to allow inside this specific uh, section of the URL. Now for now, because I know we have an ID for the article. I just want to allow numbers and not characters such as A, B, C, and D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow numbers from zero till nine, and that's it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and write plus because we can have more characters or more numbers coming after each other. So it's not just going to allow zero to nine, but also 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. So I want to write plus at the end here. So this is going to be the first parameter inside the article URL. So now we need to allow for the next parameter, which is going to be the article name. So I'm going to say forward slash, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and write another regular expression. Now this one is going to be slightly longer because we do want to allow for a bit more when it comes to names inside, for example, an article. What I want to do is I want to create a couple of different um, conditions inside this regular expression. So I want to say I want to allow again for numbers 0 through 9. I would also like to allow for letters from A till Z, uh, which are going to be non-capitalized. I also want to allow for, for capitalized letters from A till Z. And I would also like for specific uh, characters or symbols inside the URL, such as Let's say my article name is hello world, but in two words. And because we can't have space inside the URL, some people like to, to use dash or underscore as part of the URL name. Uh, I also want to allow for dash and underscore inside the URL. So we can go ahead and write this if we want to. Let's actually go ahead and switch these around because it looks nicer. And after doing so, of course, we need to add the plus symbol again because we want to allow for more characters. Now, after we did this, we need to tell it what we want to redirect to once we load this inside the URL. So if I actually write this, we just wrote here inside the URL, then I want to load up another document with another set of parameters inside the URL. So this is what is going to be inside the URL. And the next part is going to be what we want to redirect to inside the URL. So what I want to redirect to is going to be a article.php document. So I'm going to say article dot php which we do have inside the server because it does exist and it's also the document we checked for inside the second condition up here so i want to check for article dot php and then i want to go ahead and add the parameters such as id equal to something which again we don't know yet because it could be any kind of article so what we need to do now is we need to add a placeholder for a parameter which is going to be done by writing a dollar sign one so this is going to be the first 
parameter uh, placeholder inside the URL here. Uh, afterwards, I want to say and name equal to dollar sign two because we have a second parameter or a second variable inside uh, the URL. So if you have more than two, then you just add three, four, five, six, and seven, and so on inside uh, what we have here. So after doing this, it's going to go ahead and say, well, the first parameter, which is dollar sign one, is going to be the first regular expression. The second parameter is going to be the second regular expression. And that's how it works inside this code here. Now, this code here is technically going to work inside our website. So I could technically run this inside the server and it's going to work. But I want to uh, try to avoid errors later on inside this specific document in case I have more uh, rules and conditions below this specific one we just created here. So I'm going to create brackets at the end here, a closing and an opening bracket, or an opening and a closing in that order. And inside these brackets, I'm going to write NC, which stands for non-case, which means that it's not going to matter if um, we have big letters or small letters inside the URL. So if I were to write article inside the actual website with a capitalized A, it's not going to make a difference. It's still going to see it as just an A instead of it freaking out because it's not a lowercase like I wrote inside this document here. Now the next condition here, comma, capitalized L, is going to make sure that these conditions up here only apply to this specific rule down here. So if we were to create another rule later on below this code here, it's going to ignore these conditions on top of this. So that's something that I think is good to have inside your code. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my web server. And I'm going to go ahead and upload my, first of all, my article and my HT access file to this specific server. So when I go online and go to m2s.net, just going to go ahead and refresh it. And I try to access article.php. Again, I'm just going to show you what happens if we do it the regular way. If we were to say article.php, um, question mark id equal to two and name equal to hello world then you can see if we were to zoom in that we get article id is two and article name is hello world because that's what i wrote inside my article.php file now if i were to go ahead and go inside the same url and instead just say article forward slash let's say four instead forward slash my dash name dash is dash Daniel. Then you can see it changes inside the page, but the URL still looks, well, it doesn't look like what we had before. It actually looks like the new condition or the new rule that we wrote inside our HT access file. So it's still going to get the variables and the parameters inside the URL, uh, even though we were using PHP code. And, and this is something that wouldn't work with my HTML tutorial on this specific subject. So this is how we can create a new URL that looks a lot cleaner than this huge file name that we would have instead if we were to say .php, you know, dot, dollar sign, question marks, and all that sort of thing. So this is much better for creating uh, websites. Now, you might ask me, well, what if we have more than just an article page inside our website with parameters inside of it? Uh, so instead of, you know, just having an article, we'd also have a profile page such as profile.php. Well, inside your HT access file, you're just going to copy what we have here. I'm not going to turn on the rewrite engine again because we already did so, so we don't need to. And I'm just going to copy paste it down and I'm going to change it from profile to you know, whatever we have in here instead, like so. And it's going to change accordingly inside your website. So you need to do this for all the pages that you have inside your website. So that is the thing you will need to do. Um, but this is pretty much how you do this and you change the URL inside your website, which again, looks a lot prettier than a typical PHP website. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.